All right, guys, I just want to start this video with a little warning. Adding any kind of electronic devices into the circuit of your electric unicycle comes with its own risks. Please do not attempt anything that you see in this video unless you are confident that you know what you're doing. Um, anything that you add to your unicycle is done at your own risk. So keep that in mind anytime you are adding devices into an electrical circuit that are not designed by the manufacturer of that electrical circuit. All right, guys, before we get started here, I just want to add a little more context to this video, kind of throw a little synopsis together as to why exactly I'm making this video. Like I said in the last video, I am going to be keeping my George Mod Capacitor Mod installed on my wheel. If I thought it was completely Fugazi, I wouldn't keep it installed on my wheel. But at the same time, I could not actually prove that there was any effects really being gained from having the God Mod installed. At the end of the day, this is a pretty simple electronic device that we're adding to our wheel here that really isn't going to be giving you huge benefits. While it may provide some form of benefit, certainly isn't providing massive benefit. Please don't get a God Mod and think that you're making your wheel some kind of uncutoutable, invincible tank of a unit. The second reason I'm making this video is because I think it's really important that you understand the specifications of something, especially an electronic device that you're adding to your wheel. One of the things that really sketched me out when I was trying to figure out if I wanted to purchase one of these God Mod capacitor mods or not was the fact that we're not given any specifications on what the product is, right? I, it really bothered me that we weren't being told what the capacitance of the product was we're not being told what brand the capacitors are I personally would have been a lot more comfortable with the product if it wasn't being kind of hidden and veiled if it was just told to us hey this is a you know as far as I'm concerned from my research the small is a 4400 millifarad capacitor right the medium is an 8800 millifarad capacitor and the large is a 17,600 millifarad. And if these kind of specifications and details were just listed on the website, I personally would feel a lot more comfortable purchasing the product. I mean, I wouldn't buy a battery that was just no name brand, no capacity specification, just like a small, medium, large battery. Take your pick. I'm not buying that. So why would I buy that with one of these capacitor mods? Like it just, it didn't feel right to me. And that's what really made me launch into making this video in the first place was the fact that I, I just needed to know what the heck I'm putting in my wheel. And those size ratings could be incorrect. For all I know, the company has sourced a whole new uh, set of capacitors. I don't know, okay? But what I can tell you is what I have and what I've seen makes me believe that the sizes are 4,400, 8,800, 17,600. Okay, and the third reason that I'm making this video is a combination of pricing and the company message. I just feel like, okay, look, the large God Mod is selling for $600 on their website right now. A brand new, 900 watt hour, 100 volt battery with Samsung, high quality Samsung 50E cells is only $590. So for $10 less, you could dramatically increase your power output in your range by adding another battery to your unicycle. I really think you have to consider the price of the product and the price of what else you could get for the same kind of money to increase the performance of your unicycle. And just for me personally, when I weigh that cost benefit, I'll just buy a battery for those kind of prices and, and gain way more performance out of it than I would out of adding some capacitors to the, to the unicycle. And look, I understand that, look, God Mod's a business, right? They've got to make some money. They have to produce the product. They have to source all the items. They have to ship it, wrap it make it look good, pay the sales tax on it. So I'm not saying that they shouldn't be making any money on these devices. 
you have to make money. They can't get them out. They can't deliver them if they're not making money, right? But I do feel like the markup on this price is pretty darn high. And when I see some of the promotional material around the God Mod, things like the creator saying how he's just producing these to save one rider, to save one person from cutting out, to stop one accident from happening. But at the same time, you're charging $600 for a couple of capacitors wired together. I just, I feel like it's a conflicting message to me. And so I really thought about it for a while and I wasn't sure what I was gonna do, right? Because I don't wanna just, I don't wanna make a competing product I just that's not what I want to do here but at the same time I don't really want to see people spending this kind of money on a product that I can't necessarily 100% prove is doing something the chances are you don't need I, I'm sorry but 95 98% of riders really don't have a use for this product Unless you're going to be an absolute daredevil, unless you're riding to the extremes, I just don't see how you can justify spending the $600 on a couple of capacitors for your wheel. But then again, keep in mind, I also think most power pads are kind of a ripoff. I mean, when you're spending $150 on a pair of power pads that you can 3D print for 25 bucks, okay, hey, that's what the market's willing to pay. That's what the market's willing to pay. And so at the end of the day, I decided to make this video where we're gonna do a little tutorial on how to make your own capacitor mod. If you have the ability, if you have the skills, if you have the want, this is something that you can do for yourself in order to get these benefits of this modification without necessarily having to drop such a huge price tag. Now, if you don't have any of the tools I use in this video, if you don't have any experience with soldering or electrical work at all you need to weigh that in maybe that kind of experience that kind of effort is worth the extra money that you're gonna spend on a name brand god mod type capacitor modification but if you have the skills the tools and the know-how I think you should also kind of have an idea of where I'm going what we're doing here today if you have the skills, the tools, the, the know-how and the items that I'm using in this video today and you're comfortable doing this kind of work, I just want to put this out there as an option for people to actually do it themselves. All right, then. Enough of me chit-chatting. Let's get into it. All right, guys. It's your man, George. And today we are going to be making our own capacitor modification uh, that I'm going to be using in my EX20 or at least be testing alongside the God Mod. So... I just want to make a note here that originally this video was just going to be me testing out the God Mod to see if I like it, see if it actually has any effect, kind of try and do some like empirical testing of not just how it feels, but how it actually performs. Um, but in the process of looking into buying one of these things, I was actually really turned off by the creators of the God Mod. I actually emailed the website. This is the first thing that raised a red flag for me on this device was... Um, my friends in Boston had actually bought some recently. They got them for $75 a piece, the medium-sized God Mods. Sounded like a reasonable price to me. As I was looking into getting one a few months later here, I was kind of just thinking maybe my EX20, it's not the torquiest wheel. I could throw one of these in there, try it out, see if it helps. Well, in my process of looking to buy one, I went to the website and found out that the medium God Mods are now $300 which to go from $75 to $300 is quite the jump. And at $300, I was really having a hard time justifying the purchase. So I reached out to the creators and asked for the capacitance rating of the capacitors. So I was just doing some math, just trying to figure out, you know, how big a capacitor would actually have to be to have a significant impact, right? Um, I didn't come to a conclusion on exactly how big I think it needs to be. It's very complicated math. I'm not a mathematician nor an electrical engineer. But in my discussions with the people over at God Mod, they were very sketchy about how big their capacitor mod was. They wouldn't give me any range of capacitor. They wouldn't give me the brands of the capacitor, what capacity they have. They wouldn't tell me 
pretty much anything other than a small god mod is half the power of a medium, which is half the power of a large. And upon looking at the god mods, it's pretty clear that the small is one capacitor, the medium is two capacitors, and the large is four capacitors. And this really sketched me out, especially because I knew that my friends had gotten for $75, which I cannot imagine that the creator was taking a loss <laughs> in creating those. Um, so I knew that they had to be much cheaper than that to produce. And thankfully, one of my friends actually loaned me out their god mod to make this video. So uh, I was able to dissect it, take a look on the inside, figure out what exactly was going on there. Of course, the capacitors had the plastic wrapping that denotes what company, what capacitance, what voltage they are ripped right off of them. Another red flag. But, lucky me, I have another friend who actually got one of the older God Mods, one of the um, prototypes, I guess, uh, that was created uh, within this past year. But, luckily for me, those capacitors were not having their plastic wrap removed. So I was actually able to find out that the capacitors being used in the God Mod, or at least in early God Mods, were 160 volt, 2200 millifarad. And I'll just post a picture here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. This is the exact capacitors being used in the mod. And after going online and figuring out the dimensions of those capacitors, taking a look at the medium God Mod from the inside, I was able to deduce that I'm pretty sure those are the same capacitors being used in the God Mod I'm testing. So being an internet sleuth, I went online and found myself some bigger capacitors, some 3300 millifarad, 160 volt capacitors. These ones cost $9. Uh, it was like $8.50 or something like that. But I did find the exact 2200 millifarad uh, capacitors. They were pretty much the same price. They were eight, nine bucks. So I just went with the big ones. Why not, right? Let's go with a bigger power. Now, I'm not going to show you guys the inside of the God Mod, because that's not what this video is about. I'm not really here specifically to um, trash this company or to cause any, you know, issues of showing off the inside of their God Mod. But what we are going to do today is we're going to make our own capacitor mod. We're going to make the George Mod. Now, the George Mod is bigger than a medium-sized God Mod, but it is a little bit smaller than the large size God Mod. So it's somewhere in between there, but it's about the same size as the medium God Mod. So uh, we're going to be comparing the medium God Mod compared to the George Capacitor Mod and see how they perform next to each other. All right, guys, so here are the materials I will be using to make this mod today. I've got some flex glue here, which is a nice rubbery glue. It'll just create a little... Uh, barrier between the capacitors that's kind of springy um, some 6040 tin solder some 16 gauge wire some 10 gauge wire um, some wire coverings an XT90 connector wire cutters the capacitors themselves um, some duct tape some electrical tape and a soldering iron Alright, so here are the actual capacitors I'll be using. I'll be wiring two of them in parallel from Nishikong. Uh, they are 3300 millifarad, 160 volt capacitors. These are called snap capacitors, by the way, if you were looking for a similar style of your own. This is just a super cheap soldering iron I got for like 20 bucks on Amazon. It works great. All in all, we're just talking about a dab of glue, a dab of solder, maybe 15, 20 cents worth of 16 gauge wire, uh, maybe a dollar worth of eight gauge wire, uh, maybe maybe a buck 50 for the XT90 connector, a couple of pennies for wire coverings and shrink tube. You know, I got some wire cutters. Um, the capacitors were $8 a piece, a little bit of tape. Um, so all in, we're talking about what, like 16, 18, 21, 22, you know, call it 25 bucks. And if you want to buy your own soldering iron, 45 bucks to make this. All right. So real quick, before we get back into the build, somehow I either didn't turn the camera on or I ran out of battery, something. So the very beginning of this capacitor build here, I lost the footage for somehow or another. Um, basically all I did, right, I took the two capacitors, put a dab of glue in between them, taped them together, making sure that the poles aligned, right? They do have polarity, 
So there's a negative side and a positive side. So after sticking the two capacitors together, I just soldered a piece of that 16 gauge wire onto each of the poles of one side. And now we'll pick up from there. It's really as simple as just connecting the capacitors and soldering a wire to each pole. All right, so the next thing I did was kind of trim these wires down the side. Once again, let's just make sure we match up textured with textured, non with non. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing to this side and just very carefully solder the copper here. Hold it for just a moment, let it heat up and go in with our solder. Check those connections, make sure they look pretty good. Give another tug test there. Everything feels tight. All right. All right, so what we've done here is taken our capacitors and wired them in parallel. So this is now essentially a 6,600 millifarad 160 volt capacitor. And we're just gonna wrap it with some electrical tape here to keep the cables on the side nicely secured to the body. And I'm also just gonna go ahead and cover up the bottom here as well. All right, so our base capacitor is pretty much complete. Now we just gotta wire on a connection. And to do that, I'll be using some 10 gauge tinned copper wire. Now for this higher gauge wire, I am gonna turn up the temperature on the soldering iron. So it's a little bit hard, harder to uh, heat this up than that really thin copper wire. So we have to be really careful not to overheat any of the connections here. All right, so first thing first, let's uh, get some solder into our XT90 connector here. You get a look at my beautiful homemade helping hand. You like that, don't you? Let's go ahead and fill this thing up nice and full of solder. All right. And then even though these are pre-tinned wires, I'm still going to want to pre-solder them as well. I wanna make sure that they are nice and covered in solder so that we can get a nice solid connection here. Like I said, these will take a lot longer to heat up, as you can see. So make sure your soldering iron is nice and hot for these wires. 10 gauge is no joke. And do the same thing to all four ends. All right, now we're going to go ahead and wire up our XT90 connector here, which is always a pain in the balls for me to do. I just let it get nice and hot. Let it melt all the way through the wire. Melt that rosin or the uh, solder that we put in the connector already. Let that cool down a second, give it a nice little tug test. All right, that is in there solid. Cool, do the same thing for the negative. When you're doing these XT90 connectors, like I said, it does take a little longer. So you gotta let the whole thing really heat up. It's kind of a pain in the butt to get a really good connection on these things. But you gotta make sure it heats all the way through and melts that solder. Yeah, see, I can see it coming up around the edges of the wire now. That's how I know it's nice and hot. All right, let it cool down for a little bit. Give it a nice tug. Ooh, it's still hot, but it ain't going anywhere. 
All right, cool. And we're gonna hit it with a little shrink tubing. Voila, back plate on there to make it look nice, nice. Should click right in. Ah, there we go, I got it. All right, nice little XD90 wired. And I'm gonna put my nice little piece of wire uh, cover on it, just to make it look professional, you know, make it look nice. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and solder our connector. To the top here that's going to be a little bit tricky to keep these two connections isolated um, we're basically we're going to be doing it straight up and i'm going to be using a combination of shrink tube and electrical tape to make sure it's all isolated nicely from one another so that there's no shorts or anything nothing crazy we don't want shorts no no shorts in the winter all right and there we have it all wrapped up nice nice the george mod